As a full-time game developer, let me tell you that breaking into the industry is not easy, but it is not impossible. Now, I studied game development full-time at university from 2019 until 2022, and I had been making games for years before then, but I didn't get into the industry until halfway through 2023. Welcome back to another video. My name is Garnet, and I am a full-time game developer and indie game developer based in Australia. Today, I'm going to go over my experience with applying for game development jobs, what I did to boost my own portfolio, and my overall experience and how I was able to get a job as a full-time gameplay programmer at Tin Man Games. Let me take you back to August of 2022, where I just graduated university with a Bachelor of Science in Games Development. Now, for a bit of context, I finished high school in 2017, studied at TAFE in 2018, which is sort of like community college, then began my degree full-time in 2019. So I had virtually no time off other than holidays. So the idea of jumping straight into full-time work wasn't too appealing for me. So although I applied occasionally for game development jobs in the second half of 2022, I was mostly just taking a break and working on personal projects, which was also when I started this YouTube channel. Anyway, I knew that getting a job in games is extremely competitive. So my mind was always set on setting myself apart from other applicants. And to me, this meant building a strong portfolio of projects and building strong interpersonal skills. Over the course of finishing uni and actually getting a job, I applied to around 50 different studios within Australia. And that's not an exaggeration. I found a website that listed every public game studio based in Australia, and I called emailed every single one of them. I sent them my portfolio, asked if they were hiring and got rejected countless times. Now, it's easy to be discouraged from constant rejection, but at the same time, I knew that it was the nature of this industry. Something about game development that sets it apart from so many other fields of software is that your portfolio and skill set can be built over time. There isn't always a need for a higher education or employment. And I mean anyone at any point in time can just decide, today I want to learn game development. And with the abundance of resources and tutorials online, this is completely possible. And this was something that I took advantage of. Every chance I could get to build something or extend my knowledge in this field, I took it. Whenever an interviewer asked me to work on a simple project as part of an application, I would work on it, give it to them, and continue working on it to add to my portfolio. Because although there were these rejections, I always saw it as an opportunity for my own growth in this industry. If you were like me and are looking to get into game development, or maybe you're just starting out with game development and are wondering what the path is like to get into this industry, here are some tips to help you out. First off, do not be discouraged by rejection. It is extremely important to understand that generally a studio is looking for one person out of a pool of dozens or even hundreds. So if you're not that one person, that is in no way a reflection of you, your ability, or even your capability. Next, passion is recognized. I'm going to reiterate this point a few times, but game development is a niche in the software world. I wouldn't really encourage anyone to get into it unless they truly loved making games. A good perspective for it would be, if you weren't getting paid for this, would you still be enjoying it as a hobby? And if the answer is no, then it might be time to rethink the direction you're taking. As mentioned, I was rejected literally countless times, but one comment that interviewers always made was that they could see my passion, and part of that comes from being a good communicator. I went through so many phases of applications or interviews, and although the first few interviews may be a little bit scary, you get comfortable and understand that interviewers are just people doing their job too. They understand that you're going to be nervous, but if you can comfortably talk about your projects or processes in game development and you sound excited or happy about it, they're going to recognize this too. A really good way a friend of mine put this is, oftentimes, especially as a junior or graduate, you are hired on for your potential, not your ability. When you're first getting your foot in the door, you aren't expected to know everything. But if you have the passion and drive and interviewers can see this, then they know you have the capabilities to learn. My next point is apply for jobs for experience. Now, it might sound weird like this, but if you're at that stage where maybe you've been working on games for a while and you are looking to get into the industry, then just applying for job listings can't hurt, even if you don't expect to get the particular job. There were heaps of jobs that I applied for and I actually got a call back and got into an interview with them. And these interviews will be so invaluable to you because not only are you getting experience with the process, Process, but it'll generally help you find your weaknesses in the process as well. Now, I'm not saying apply for a senior role of 48 years experience and five shipped games type of thing, but if you see a junior or grad role, but you feel you don't fit every category, the worst that can happen is that they say no. Next, never stop growing. As I said, whenever I had the opportunity to work, build and develop a project, I took it. To give a few examples, I applied for a job where the interviewer asked me to recreate the arcade game Pong. 
So I spent about a week developing it. Very simplified, nothing too insane. But after submitting it, I wanted to continue working on it and put it in my portfolio of projects. And that's exactly what I did. I saw this as an opportunity to improve my UI and UX skills. So I spent time polishing it and giving it a proper arcade feel. Now, did I get the job? Hell no, but I had another piece to my portfolio I gained a bit more knowledge in various processes of game development, and I continued on. Another interviewer asked me to recreate the Match 3 game Jelly Splash, and I had never worked on a puzzle game before, so again I saw this as a perfect opportunity for something to put on my portfolio. I put together the game again in about a week, then continued developing it for myself. I wanted this to feel like a proper game with levels and achievements, so for this project that's exactly how I treated it. Around this time, I had also been learning about custom editor tools in Unity, so I wanted to see how I can explore creating a tool for this project. And the idea that stood out to me was creating a level editor that would create and update data in the game just with the click of a button, without me having to hand build the level, update the UI, create the interactions, all the processes that would normally go into creating levels. So I did a bit of research on it and created exactly that, an editor tool that creates all the data for creating levels encapsulated into one window. So with how this project looks, do you think I got the job? Ken, no. And I wasn't discouraged because I knew that now I had another skill under my belt that I could continue to develop and incorporate into my workflow. There were a bunch of other projects that I did this with, so you get the idea. But the point here is to just continue to grow with your projects. It took me 10 months from the time of graduation to landing a job in the industry. 10 months that I could have spent dropping game development completely, but instead took the time to continue to build and nurture my knowledge and portfolio. And even then, the amount that I have learned in the last year of working full time is proof that you do not need to know absolutely everything. My experience with Tin Man Games, from the application process to working in the studio, has been extremely positive. During the initial interview process, the engineering team actually wanted me to show off a project of mine, talk about my processes, things that I've done, things I'm proud of. And to bring it back to my previous point, I spent 10 months applying, but I also spent this 10 months to grow. And the amount that I was able to say to them and show them, even if the code wasn't the best, they could see not only my capabilities, but more so than anything, was the passion that I had for this industry. The first game I ever made looked like this, with code that I barely understood. And the idea of working in this industry and knowing what I know now seemed like nothing more than a dream. So I wholeheartedly believe that if I can do it, anyone can. Now, it is one thing to make a game, finish a game, and start making a new game. But if there's going to be any takeaways that I hope you get from this video, it's going to be to experiment. A common theme and approach that I had with every new project was, how can I do what I have already done, but better? And of course, that means a little bit of research into understanding certain practices or principles, but the goal is to just keep getting better, right? As good as it is to have 100 projects in your portfolio, it's better to have 10 where each project you build a little bit of understanding, experiment with new features and ways of implementing, and in general, just improve your own strengths in game development. My final point is be realistic about your expectations. This won't be an overnight thing, and more likely than not, you won't always get a job after your first interview, or even the job that you're hoping for. But at this stage in your career, you're benefiting the most from pure experience. This process could take months, and I know not everyone will always be in a fortunate position where they can take months off at a time, but if you truly have a passion for this, then don't let it ruin your motivation or drive. I want to give another example and take this very lightly, but understand the point I'm conveying. There's a developer. Eric Baroni, who had a hard time getting into the software industry, not just games. So, while looking for work, he decided to build up his portfolio with a little passion project while working part-time at a movie theatre. This project ended up becoming Stardew Valley. If you guys stuck out this far into the video, I really appreciate it. I want to be seen as a resource to help other people get into this industry, whether it's through work or as a hobby. If you guys have any questions about game development, working in the industry, or just want to say hi, leave a comment down below or join my Discord group, which will be linked in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this video, subscribing to the channel, liking this video, and leaving a comment down below helps me out so much. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to catch you guys in the next video.